My name is Maria Anders. I work at the Interdisciplinary Endoscopy at the University Hospital of hamburg eppendorf in Germany. And I would like to introduce our study on subsquamous extension of Barrett's esophagus and neoplastic cases. So what we do already know is that subsquamous intestinal metaplasia, so-called SSIM, may occur after endotherapy of neoplastic Barrett's esophagus. Its occurrence in untreated cases, however, remains currently unclear. As incompletely eradicated SSIM may provide a potential source of recurrent disease after treatment, the goal of our study was to assess the prevalence of SSIM in treatment-naive cases. In order to answer our question, we asked our colleagues from the pathology department to reevaluate tissue samples provided by 110 patients who had undergone widespread endoscopic mucosa resection, so-called EMR, for neoplastic Barrett's esophagus. Mean Barrett length in these patients was 4.2 centimeters, with long Barrett means more than 3 centimeters in extension occurring in 62 cases. Resistology was 66 cancers, high-grade neoplasia occurring in 15 and low-grade in 3 cases. In 26 cases with positive biopsies at other institutions, no neoplasia was found in the resection specimens during widespread EMR at our institution. Squamous epithelium was found in 138 of the 506 tissue samples. SSIM was noted in 124 of those 138 resection specimens, which means on a per patient analysis that in almost every patient SSIM could be found. Mean SSIM length was 3.3 millimeters in all cases with a maximum extent of 9.6. And interestingly, in 25% of the cases, SSIM length was at least 5 millimeters. Furthermore, SSIM correlated significantly with the length of Barrett's esophagus. Furthermore, we found a significant correlation between length of SSIM and occurrence of neoplasia, which means that an extent of more than 5 mm was found in 85% of the cases with neoplasia, whereas it was found in 24% of the cases only in cases without neoplasia. The next slide shows two examples of SSIM found in our study. On the left-hand side you can see an example of non-neoplastic SSIM with Barrett glands undermining the squamous epithelium of the esophagus more than 3 mm. And on the right hand side, you can see an example of subsquamous extension of a highly differentiated intermucosal Barrett's adenocarcinoma. Furthermore, several cases were analyzed for the distribution of SSIM extension by comparing different slices from one tissue specimen. Hereby, we noted inhomogeneous extension in serial sections of the same patient in almost all cases. This cartoon shows variations of SSIM extent underneath squamous epithelium, which means that measurements along the green line would not show any SSIM, while maximum extent of SSIM is shown by the blue line. Based on these data, we conclude that SSIM occurs regularly in patients with Barrett's esophagus regardless of neoplasia grade. Furthermore, it seems justified to extend both biopsies as well as resection at least one centimeter into squamous epithelial in patients with neoplastic Barrett's esophagus.